So the use of technology to enhance performance is the same as doping. Do you agree or do you disagree? My name is Dr. David James. Throughout my whole life, I've been passionate about engineering. I've been passionate about sport. More recently, I've been really interested in the ethics and the philosophy of sport and how far we should go in terms of enhancing performance for our athletes. I came into the sport late at 18, started chasing Chris Akabusi and Todd Bennett up a hill, and it was hard. And I did really well very quickly, won the Commonwealth title, the European title. I was a talent that put them in a training environment that will run fast, and then I broke my foot. And from that moment onwards, it was an uphill struggle. So the advice I would give somebody now, absolutely, in my situation, is stop, let's get you looked at physically. Now, that exists now. It didn't exist back in the mid-'80s. Wetsuits these days, it's so easy to get out of them. In my day, it was a real fight. On the cycling, people have uh, strain gauges on their cranks. They can record it. They have GPS sensors so they can see where they're going so that they can tell what their speed is. And there's a lot more that can be done in the future. Well, long term, we're hoping that we can get a full biomechanical analysis of anyone running or something. And we'll just build up from that, hopefully getting things like how you hit the ground, not just how long you hit the ground for, whether you pronate, whether you supinate, whether you do various things that might cause injuries. Uh, and slowly but surely, we're hopefully going to get up to a full skeletal model so we know exactly all the biomechanics of how you move. The modern sporting world is really dominated by science, technology and engineering. It's really very much part of the fabric of what modern sport is. But with that comes this dilemma really around who is actually responsible for the performance. Is it the athlete or is it the equipment, the technology, the support that they've got? So to understand this relationship, we went all around the country, we did six different events, each one looking at a different sport, and at each event we brought world-class researchers and world-class sports people, engaged audiences, we asked them how far should we go, what science is good and really what science is bad, and then we pulled all that together and now we're in the business of trying to really interpret all that data, trying to figure out what are the ground rules for work in this area. Any advice for Andy Murray in Australia at the moment? <laughs> I thought it was a really fantastic event actually, um, it's interesting for a number of reasons because it covers obviously the science of sport, uh, you had actual athletes here talking about their input and their feedback to the sport and then obviously you had the, the scientists who support uh, the athletes in doing what they do, so it's really, really interesting, diverse event. Having that debate about is it, is it ethical, is it legal, is it moral, was quite interesting from my perspective. Is sport about testing pure natural talent? Or is it actually about testing how an athlete might be able to use and exploit technology? People always talk about the, the virtuous perfection of natural talent, this idea of naturalness, that the athletes can just turn up and be brilliant. We're moving on past that now. Being an elite sports person, you've also got to have the, the capacity, the intelligence to exploit technology. That's a key part of what being an elite sports person is. I was the first rider in the UK to use these German SRM cranks. And during the race, the riders were coming up to me, what's on ITV? Can you get Eurosport on that? But now <laughs> they've come on in leaps and bounds. The measuring with the cranks, motion capture, guys like Louis and the physiologists can then implement the training a lot better than I feel was, was done in the past. This is a, a data file taken from an Olympic level cyclist doing a four hour training ride. So you can see the time stretched across on this axis here and how hard the rider is working on this axis here. So we've got a way in which we can instrument the bikes of our elite cyclists whilst they're either training, so we can build up a picture of what preparation is required, or even during races themselves. Another finding that we found really interesting was the notion of state-sponsored research in sport. We were just talking about the unfairness of the uh, poor countries, the rich countries, the technology, who can afford what? It's down to money and, it, and it's, it's just not right. So I don't know how it's all going to pan out. We asked our audiences about this, this idea that, that nation states should be allowed to create technologies solely for their elite athletes. Really what's been happening um, in, in, in recent Olympic Games. And our audience said, yeah, that, that's fine, that's okay. That's fine for Team GB to have their own bike, their own boat. However, when you also ask those same audiences whether equipment should be standardised, they also said yes. If they're our athletes, 
it's okay that they can have special equipment, but everyone else should use the same. If we could achieve the holy grail of having a super coaching on the bottom of our boats, which made the boat go faster, well, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Wonderful at least until everybody else is doing it, in which case we're all in the same boat. I guess when we use technology in sport, what it's trying to do is about trying to gain an advantage. I think what's much more a problem is if your technology actually gains an advantage over the sport, it actually fundamentally changes the nature of the sporting test. That's the red line that you shouldn't cross. I thought it was uh, fascinating. Some very interesting explanation about what's going on in terms of sort of the research in technology and some very thought-provoking discussion about where the boundaries are, sort of ethical boundaries are. Science has a huge impact on our society. Often it's very benevolent and very good, but sometimes it causes problems and, and distrust. And I think it's very good to engage the public in the decisions, in the future direction for research. And hopefully this, this work can actually feed up into those people who are making decisions about the future of sport, making decisions about maybe which technology should be allowed, where the future of anti-doping is going to be going. I think to give them some information on what the public really feel, I think would be really valuable.